I don't know if you know, but I was in that movie paid in full. I did not know that. The Cameron movie? No, I didn't know. When Money Mitch drives up, guess who's riding shotgun with him? When I see when Dame Dash comes through like that and they're talking back and forth, because Peyton Full was shot in, in, in Toronto. Majority of it was shot in Toronto, Hamilton, Ontario. Mm -hmm. And then obviously we had to do the rest in Harlem for, for uh, to keep it organic and original. But um, yeah, that's me and that. And uh, the same director of photography for Let Your Backbone Slide was a gem by, by the name of Paul Sarasi. So he left making music videos to, and started making like like uh, movies. So when he saw me on the set, a paid in full with Money Mitch and the Black Sob. He was like, yo, maestro, how you doing, man? Good to see you. So he made sure, even though I didn't get dialogue in that movie, he made sure I got seen. So now you can go back and see all those those clips of Makai Pfeiffer in the whip. That's yours truly sitting right beside him, you know? <laughs> well, how, how and why did you get that opportunity? Because I started acting and um, I started doing um, film and TV about like 1999. I started, so I'm I'm in a few movies that you probably seen. Now you're gonna look back and be like, "Yo, right?" Um, I've been acting for the last, I mean, since 2000, you know. So I'm I'm in Honey. Uh, so when I saw Makai Pfeiffer again, I'm like, bro, you following me? Because we just finished doing Paid in Full, and then he's in Honey as well. Four brothers. Um, uh, I'm around, man. I played I played uh. A move in a movie called Redemption with Jamie Foxx when he played uh, Tookie Williams, the character oh, yeah. I played. I played okay. Tony. Yeah, I played Tony Bogart in that movie, um, and I had the chance actually to speak to Tookie oh, while wow. I was getting. Yeah, man, they put me on the phone with him because the Tony Bogart character was the liaison between him and Jail and the Crips, right? And um, yeah, so some cool movies, man. So and, wait, Four Brothers, I've seen a few times. Who were you, or what were you in that? I'm with Victor Sweet's Driver, man. Really? You see in the blue Sherlin. That, so that, even when you're driving, uh, so that's in the snow. In the snow, in the snow? that's snow? Yeah. Really? <laughs> you're gonna look back now and be like, "Yo, that's that guy." Yeah, man, that's me. That's crazy. Yeah, man. Yeah, I've been acting for a while, and and, and you know, a lot of my projects within the last ten years have been a lot of um, like Canadian uh, film and TV projects. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you look at my my um, IMDb, it's it's pretty sexy. It's pretty sexy still. You know? That's impressive. Thank you. Yeah, I thought uh, Four Brothers is a very great movie. And I also think it's underrated for whatever reason. But I thought... Uh... We filmed that. We filmed that movie, just so you know, while the Super Bowl was on. I'll never forget that. That's when Philly was uh, going up against, against uh, New England the first time with Terrell Owens. I'll never okay. forget that. Yeah, man. Andre 3000 was peace. Mark Wahlberg was peace, definitely. And she would tell Edge for it, no yeah, doubt. He, he's incredible. He was good he, to work with, man. I think he's one of the most underrated actors. He's a really talented actor. Yeah, very good dude. Huh. Yeah, well, now now I'm curious. I got to uh, check it out. Yeah, man. Speaking of underrated, you got Raz Kaz on Mr. Evans. Uh, and I'm friends with Raz. Shout out to Raz as always. but. That's obviously a super political song. So Raz is uh, phenomenal on there. But I wanted you to talk about how you said you were Nat Turr once he re realized he read the Bible wrong. So bars! Bars! I'm mad. Yo, can I tell you something? You're one of the dopest interviewers, guy. Thank you. No, nah, real talk. Real talk. I knew you were dope anyway, man. But like, you take time and it shows how dedicated to you are for what you do and how much you really appreciate artists, man. Cause, cause I'm proud of those bars, man. I'm proud of those bars, man. And the average person in the interview, they just overlooked that. I don't know if they got lazy with artistry, whatever like that. But, but right there, when Nat Turner read the Bible wrong, he didn't realize, he, well, he didn't realize that he was original man. He didn't realize like, listen, man, I'm here to do great things. I'm not here to be a slave. You know what I'm saying? So once he realized he was reading this wrong all the time is once he realized his true greatness, right? Now, the song, Mr. Evans, the reason I called it that 
is because of good times. Because the, the father, JJ's father, was Mr. Evans. He died on, on, on the, the third season. And removing the black father from the black family was the reason why we're allowed in, in, in the situation we're at. So that was the whole concept of the of the song, Mr. Evans, right? So removing removing the, the father figure from his family is killing the family. That's why that was the whole concept of that, that whole song. That's why um the last line the Rascast said was um tell that to Florida Evans. Damn, right? So I'm and you begin. Of, he was a good father. You talk about that at the beginning of your lyrics too. Mr. Evans was a good father. He loved his wife plus his two sons and his daughter. You know, you know, they killed him off. Season three was a goner, and the city went damn. Because I'm a set. I grew up in the, in, in the seventies. I was born in sixty eight. I remember when 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 JJ's father died, man. You know, so that hit all of us. And just to see that the removal. I, I'll be honest with you. That's the reason why I really work hard to be the best father I can for my son, because I know that, and my parents, you know, hip hop might've celebrated its 50th anniversary last year, but my parents just celebrated its 57th anniversary, man. So my pops is a good dude, you know, he did. So that's what I want my son to see, to say about me. You know, when he looks back, when he's in his forties, fifties, he can say, yo, my dad was the truth because removing the black father from his family, is, 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 is that we're public enemy number one, the black father who will take care of, of his kids. So that's that was the importance of that song right there, um, Mr. Evans. And I'm glad I'm glad you peeped that, you know? No, I'm very, it was great to hear it on Rap Prime Minister. It's one of my favorite songs on there, but I also think it's very powerful and Raz, and you did a great job on it. And I'd like too, how you were saying the chaos until the cemetery, because that's, um, which made me want to ask, because in the United States, of course, there's that big issue with removing the black father from the family. Is that as pronounced in the black communities in Canada as, you, as you've seen it in the United States? Or is it the same? Is it different? Well, I would say that, that um, I've been, like I said, um, I'm fortunate to have like, my father in my life on, on that level like that. But um, I think that's universally applicable. I think the black man is public enemy number one, regardless, you know what I'm saying? So that's something you gotta look at. And I wanna say this too, you just mentioned Rascaz. There's a track that I did on the Champagne Campaign album that I didn't put on this, right? But it features Sadat X. And the song was the title track, Champagne Campaign. I said, listen, I want you to write a song, a verse about somebody who motivates you, all right? I'm gonna do, I'm gonna spit a verse. My man Rich Kid, he's gonna spit a verse. So Sadat X. I go, it doesn't matter who it is. You know, it's not about us celebrating how great we are. We're celebrating somebody else, right? He goes, I'm gonna make it about my father. And his verse was dope. Shout out to my brother Sadat X. And you're the first person I'm telling this to. That was the second track I ever did with him. Cause an orchestrated noise, I had a song called See You on the Weekend. Shout out to AD Empire because they had this beat and the chorus, I'll see you on the weekend. It sounded like a party record. But my mind thinking like, imagine if we turn this into a song where the father is telling this child, I'm going to see you on the weekend. So I go, yo, I'm going to spit a rhyme about my son telling him I'm going to see him on the weekend. So that ex, uh, uh, he spit a verse about his daughter. Say, I'm going to see you on the weekend. So no matter what we're going through with the relationship with the mothers in our life, I'm your father and I'm going to be here for you no matter what. So so it's funny we're having this conversation now, but we're talking about three songs that I've written um, reinforcing the importance of the father, the black father in the lives of, of, of their kids, man. Real talk. Yeah, it's obviously crucially important. Yeah. And I, I had the fortune of growing up where I did in Maryland, but my neighbors were black and, you know, mother and father, and they were there. So I saw it. I saw obviously other aspects of it not being there, but I literally was next door to me. So I saw it and got to experience it. And a lot of my friends too, not all of them, but a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, man. So I saw it. Dope, 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 man. Well, yeah, man, that's important to me. Like I said, like I got fun records and I got you know, some records like that. And you want to do it in a way you, where you don't sound like you're preaching, but do it in slick. That's why Mr. Evans was, was in the way it is where 
not everybody's going to catch it right away. But if you do, um, you listen to it a couple of times, it's like, wow, he's saying something that resonates. Definitely. Yeah. Also from Champagne, Champagne Campaign that's on Rap Prime Minister is Drama. And that one is definitely very different from Mr. Evans. So <laughs> break but, down. But, but Drama is different than Mr. Evans, but it's social commentary at the same yes. time. So yeah. that's what I was going to say. So break down how you could have the social commentary, but make it such a different type of social commentary. Um, okay, so drama is uh, featuring um, my man Tona. Tona is, is dope. That song right there, uh, that was I wanted to show how diverse I was as as a as an MC. You know, I sound different from from my majority of records. You know, I, I tried that style first with Jurassic Park, which was done earlier, and I, I like that. I go, let me tap into that even more, bringing the West Indian. Um, bringing the, the reggae, the, the, the soca, the calypso, you know, fused into what we do right now with, with hip hop and have a message with that, you know, in a way that I haven't experienced before. And to me, it worked, man. That's a heavy track, man, to me. Like, we killed that. And the fact that we went back to back, woo! And that's just basically saying just watch your surroundings because one thing could lead to the next and it's a ripple effect, you know? So. Absolutely.